now to a new collaboration between the University of Warwick and the NHS Institute for Innovation and Improvement. Warwick CSI, or Clinical Systems Improvement, will enable healthcare professionals to study the lean manufacturing philosophy and techniques used in the automotive and aviation industries in order to deliver better quality patient care. Here's Matthew Cook, Professor of Emergency Medicine, to explain more. Warwick CSI is about learning lessons from other sectors and applying them to health, uh, particularly by looking at the process of care uh, rather than the specific treatments. So how can we design the system to give the best care and the safest care? I'm a clinician, what I'm interested in is the quality of care and if you improve the quality of care, you actually improve all those other things that other people are interested in, such as the cost of the care. I'm Don Berwick, I'm a pediatrician and head of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, which is an American-based uh, NGO that works on improving healthcare systems all over the world. And for years I've been interested in the idea of improving healthcare by improving the systems that deliver healthcare. Lean thinking or lean production is a branch of improvement that developed outside healthcare in industries that figured out how you can have kind of waste-free production, do away with waiting times, do away with inventories, do away with wasted efforts on the part of staff and, and, and employees. We can bring those same concepts of, of developing really perfect patterns of work to support the workforce. So they're not wasting their time, we're not wasting patients' time, we're not wasting supplies. So costs can fall and quality rise at the same time. One of the key issues when Toyota designed it was safety and quality were the linchpin of it all. And simple things such as, actually, if there's six different people seeing a patient, they have to hand over to another person who hands over to another and another. And each time you hand over, there's an opportunity there for information to get lost and therefore a safety issue. If somebody's allergic to a drug, perhaps, and it doesn't get passed on to the next person. So if we go to a lean system where only one person cares for that person in their whole stay. There aren't the opportunities to, to lose information. It's also around designing systems so that if there's been a mistake, can we design it so that can't go wrong again? My name is Faye Bailey and I'm the Acting Director of Nursing Services at Heart of England Foundation Trust. We've always had systems and processes, but we're now we're much more aware of organisational learning. When we find trends emerging through reporting of incidents, we are much more systematic in a hospital environment in actually clearly identifying what the trend is and then putting the operational learning in to take away or minimise that error. My name is David Morgan, I'm a consultant EMT surgeon. Uh, I was the surgical advisor to the National Patient Safety Agency from 2000 to 2006. Well, I became focused on safety about 12 years ago when one of my patients was operated on by one of my juniors ha and had the wrong operation. At that time I looked at the system and realised there were a lot of flaws in the way that patients are handled when they go through the surgical journey. As a consequence of that, I went to see if we could use technology to improve the patient's safety and actually improve theatre efficiency. We developed a process involving a radio frequency identity tag, which came because of a dialogue I had with the IT director of Tesco supermarket, who was using RFID uh, in, to stop any uh, shoplifting. And it struck me that it could be actually transferred into healthcare fairly easily and be used for safety proofing the surgical journey. And by able to, being able to measure the patient's journey, you can actually increase uh, theatre efficiency. And as a resu result of that, we found that not only does it mistake-proof the surgical journey, it actually improves theatre throughput from anything from 19 to 25%. What we're going to do now is you'll shortly be going to sleep and we'll be doing an operation on you. It's all about process management. I mean, process management is, is known and implemented outside of healthcare, but it's only just starting to make an impact on healthcare. And by using the combination of lean uh, techniques and process management, coupled with new technology, we can not only improve patient safety, but also theatre efficiency and efficiency throughout healthcare, which is obviously better for the hospital, but more important, best for the patients. I'm a consultant in the emergency department here and several years ago uh, we realised there were certain processes here that had gradually evolved rather than being designed 
uh, from scratch. And so we'd actually added lots of extra little steps um, for good reason. But actually, when we stood back and looked at the whole system, we realised there was a really complicated system for something that was relatively simple. And getting rid of those weights didn't just reduce the waiting time, it actually meant that staff could spend more time with the patients because they were spending less time sorting out problems and more dealing with the patient directly. One of the trends that we noticed through um, error reporting was an increase in drug errors taking place in the ward. And we did an observational exercise looking at why that could possibly happen. And one of the things we found was that the person who was giving the drugs out was being constantly interrupted by doctors wanting information or other nurses wanting information or visitors asking for guidance, other patients asking for guidance. So it became quite obvious during that observational exercise that it was no wonder errors were happening. So what we did was think about is there any other examples in outside of NHS working that actually had the same problem and what we came up with was the airline industry they had introduced mechanics wearing red vests saying do not disturb me this I am doing an important task so we started we're getting our nurses who were doing drug administration rounds to wear red vests and what we're now seeing is a downward trend in drug administration errors. My name is Phil Higdon I'm uh, formerly a British Airways pilot and I'm now director of training for Tarima. Uh, what we do in Tarima is to bring the safety processes from aviation into healthcare. The processes are broadly similar with regard to the, the people side, the human factors aspects of crew resource management as it is in aviation, team resource management as it is in healthcare are identical. They're, you're just dealing with the fact that human performance is variable, you're dealing with the fact that uh, humans have to interact with one another to get a decent result and humans have to interact with systems and processes. That if we can manage that fallibility, if we have the skills to manage that fallibility, and we have the will to manage it, that fallibility, then we can get a much more effective team, we can get a much more effective result at the end of the day. To beat up on the healthcare workforce or blame them for things gone wrong is naive and absolutely wrong. To redesign healthcare so it can perform for patients the way we really want it to, that's mature, that's advanced, that's where the healthcare needs to go, and that's what Warwick CSI is trying to learn with the rest of us. We're still at early days. We're running courses already where there's lots of health service managers and clinicians already starting to adopt it throughout uh, the UK. Uh, but we need to do more research in the area to work out which bits we adopt from other sectors and which bits the health service is slightly different.